Hey friends, it's me, Kelly, with Kelly Tinnen Consulting. This week again, we're talking about challenging those assumptions about different generations in the workforce. Last week, I broke some of those generational boundaries. Again, it's interesting to see how I think when we step back and think about it, how we all can take a little piece of somebody into the way that we see the world, into the way that we work, etc. You know, just because you're a millennial doesn't mean that you check all of those millennial boxes, as they say. Really, I think the discussion is about how can we leverage the strengths of people on our team, regardless of background. I think everybody has institutional knowledge that they can share that can enrich the work experience. Many of you that know me personally know I'm a big advocate for mentoring. I have many mentors. I think mentoring is great. And I challenged you last week to think about the strengths that you possess in the workplace, how you can leverage those strengths, your own strengths, but how you can recognize the strengths in others and leverage those. One of the ways to do that is through mentoring. Again, I love mentoring. I I have many, many mentors of of my own have, have really changed my trajectory in terms of work and and life and and everything in between. Mentoring is different than coaching. Mentoring is more of a long-term relationship where a person may help guide someone else, offer advice, help rise them up through the ranks, so to speak. Where coaching is often very skill-based and shorter term. So I'm gonna help you work on this particular skill to help you get this promotion. So there is a difference between the two types of relationships, both very valuable and both I think can contribute positively to somebody's outcomes on a team and an organization individually. But as a leader or as someone in your organization, somebody on a team, you may want to identify opportunities for mentoring. And for those of you that have teams, there may be individuals that you want to identify and say, hey, it would be really great if we could connect you with a mentor so that you can build more confidence in this area or, you know, have somebody that you can go to for, you know, career advice, whatever it may be. Mentoring opportunities. So what so what are they? Informal mentoring. Informal mentoring happens all the time all around us. We have may have individuals that may have more institutional knowledge in a certain area that we may look up to for certain things that really kind of become our mentors and somebody who we can bounce ideas off of, somebody who can give us ad- advice. And that can really happen organically. Companies do have more formalized mentoring programs, which your company can create a more formalized mentoring program. And those have been deemed really successful as well. Again, as I've mentioned several times, I've had many informal relationships, informal mentoring relationships, I guess I should clarify that. And I mean, you can't even put the value on on how beneficial they've really been. Reverse mentoring. So reverse mentoring is really just kind of a fancy phrase for when two people kind of exchange information. It's where two parties essentially kind of mentor each other and we all have things that we can learn from each other. So maybe we have one person who's mentoring somebody and kind of giving them advice about, you know, how to implement social media into their business. That's just an easy example for me to kind of pull from. So maybe we have somebody who's, who's, well, yeah, I can show you how to do X, Y, and Z. And in return, the other individual is, is maybe sharing how to, you know, how to effectively communicate through writing or verbal communication, conflict resolution, those t- sorts of things. Reverse mentoring really is mutually beneficial where two people can benefit from the knowledge that each person has to share. Several years ago when I was in graduate school, a group of us did a study on diversity and mentoring and really found some positive outcomes that diverse diversity or diverse mentoring relationships can be beneficial uh, to help challenge mental models. You know, if certain things like trust and, and respect and those sorts of things were, were in place, but Diverse mentoring relationships can be beneficial because people see the world through different sets of glasses. And so 
if I have somebody who's helping me, who has different experiences than I have had, then that helps shape my work world. I should say, and not necessarily shape it, but enrich. It can definitely help to enrich my experiences. I think diverse mentoring relationships can be really, can be really valuable and can really help us challenge those mental models that we may have, just kind of old ways of doing things, and can help us challenge bias. So sometimes what we do is we seek out people who have similar ideas as we do. It's just almost human nature. Seeking out somebody who maybe has a little bit of a different viewpoint, how can that help enrich our viewpoint on the way that we work? the way that we lead our teams, etc. Yeah, so mentoring. I think that's one way that you can definitely leverage different generations and the power, the knowledge that different generations have in the workforce. So with that, next week, we're gonna talk a little bit about skill development. I uh, challenge you again to just kind of think about, hey, what could a mentor do for me? Or what might it do for individuals on my team? If you like this content, be sure to subscribe and follow our newsletter or subscribe to our newsletter. Follow our YouTube, I guess. I got that backwards. But definitely check us out so you can get this exclusive content and check us out on social media. Kelly Tennant and Associates. We'll see you soon.